Hi everybody. In this video we're going to be solving a system of equations. A system of equations is going to contain two or more equations that when graphed may or may not have any points of intersection. So our objective is to solve the system of equations determining if there are any intersection points. Before we get to that work we're going to determine if an ordered pair is a solution of the system of equations. That means do any at all of these ordered pairs in A, B, C, D, do any of them satisfy or when plugged into this set of uh, equations results in a true statement. So we're just going to go through and try each ordered pair. Alright, so for part A, it might be best to come over here and label the ordered pair x, y. It keeps everything straight. Okay, we're going to take and substitute in negative 1 and 2 for the x and the y in each equation to determine if we get a true statement with the numbers. So for the top equation, 2 times the x is going to be negative 1 plus y. I'm going to put a question mark above my equal sign until I do the computations, and that's supposed to equal 5. Well, negative 2 plus 2 question mark. Does that equal 5? No, it's clear. This is 0, and 0 does not equal 5. So we can stop right there. No sense in checking the ordered pair in the second equation. So no, negative 1, 2 is not a solution okay, of that system of equations. And that's what we're going to do for, for B, C, and D. This is X, this is Y. Go back to the original equation. 2 times my X, or 2 times 3, plus negative 5, we might, run, might want to write it as minus 5, does that equal question mark 5? Well, let's perform the computations and determine if it's true. So that's 6, 6 minus 5 is going to be 1, uh, so you can stop right here if you want and say no, that's not going to equal 5. No sense in checking that ordered pair in the second equation because if that ordered pair doesn't satisfy both the equations, then no, it's not a solution. All right, let's go to C. X and Y. Begin again. 2 times the X plus the Y is 4. Does that equal 5? That's 8 plus 4. That does not equal 5. No. So far, pretty easy. Let's check D. Alright, so we do know that the ordered pair 2, 1 does satisfy the top equation, but we now have to proceed and check that same ordered pair in the second equation. So now I'm going to go to the bottom equation, so it's going to be 3 times 2 minus 2 times 1. Does that equal with the question mark 4? Well, this is 6 minus 2, that is going to be equal 4. Another little question mark, so yes, 4 equals 4. So I'm going to come over here and say yes. The visual would be that if you were to solve each of these equations for y equals, type them into the calculator, graph them, the point of intersection of those two lines okay, would fall at the ordered pair 2, 1. Alright, well now it's going to be our task to find the solution. And we're going to use the technique of substitution to find if there are any points of intersection. All right, so what does substitution mean? We're going to actually solve one of the two equations uh, for one of the variables, preferably a variable that has a coefficient of 1. Well, if you look at number 1, just real quickly, all the coefficients on all the variables are 1, so we have a lot of choices in which equation to choose to start with. I'll just start with the top equation. I need to get x or y by itself on one side of the equation. And because we're kind of used to solving for y, I guess I'll do that up here. So when I look at this equation right here, I want to get y by itself. So that means subtract an x 
bring it over to the, th the 4 side. So y is going to equal negative x plus 4. All right. So it would be nice if one of the variables was already solved for itself, meaning the equation was x equals blah, 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 or y equals something. But sometimes we have a little bit of kind of pre-work to do. All right, so we solved the top equation for y. Now what we do is we take that equation right here, y equals negative x plus 4, and we're going to substitute it in for the y in the other equation. So what I'm about to do is rewrite the bottom equation, but where y is, I'm going to replace it with negative x plus 4. So x minus, be careful with your subtraction sign, x minus, and then whatever y is equivalent to. y is equal to this. I'm going to insert negative x plus 4. So by us getting rid of the y, we have an equation in just x that we can solve and find the value of x to send us on our way. All right, let's distribute the negative. So it's going to make that plus x and then a minus 4. Cleaning it up. Add a 4 to both sides. Divide by 2. All right, so far so good. My x coordinate is 3. Let's get the y coordinate of the point of intersection then. Well, to get the y coordinate, Let's go ahead and go back to our original system, or even this equation right here, using one of the three of these to help us get y. Well, I think the most obvious choice here is this equation is already solved for y, so let's use this equation right here. So y equals the opposite of x, or the opposite of 3 plus 4. So y equals 1. So our solution would be the ordered pair 3 comma 1. You could verify that graphically by solving each of these equations for y, typing them into the calculator, using the intersection feature on your calculator to find the solution 3 1. All right, so let's look at look, take a look at number 2. Okay, for the method of substitution, our objective is to take one of the variables, preferably a variable that has a coefficient of 1. Well, to me, I see the only one that fits that description would be in the top equation where y has a coefficient of 1. Solve that equation for y equals. Let's come over here and do that work. So I'm going to leave y on the left side of the equation. So I'm going to have y equals, which means I need to subtract a 2x, and then I still have the plus 5. So we're going to isolate one of the variables, preferably the one with a coefficient of 1. And then in the other equation, wherever you see y, you're going to substitute in negative 2x plus 5. So keep everything else the same, but replace y with what it's equivalent to. Minus 2 times, and then y is negative 2x plus 5. Go back and take a look, and that's supposed to equal 4. All right, let's complete the algebra. 3x comes down, distribute the negative 2, so that's a negative times a negative, which is a positive, and then 2 times 2 is 4. Keep the x. Go back and distribute the negative 2 into the 5, so that's minus 10 equals 4. So we're going to have 7x from combining the two linear terms. Let's add 10 and divide by 7. We only have half of the ordered pair solution. All right, so we're going to substitute 2 back in, back substitute 2 back in uh, for either this x, this x, or this x over here. And the quickest equation to use would be this equation right here. Negative 2 times the x I found plus 5. So y equals negative 4 plus 5. Come up here. All 
All right, let's continue. Let's look at three and four. All right, we're going to solve this by the method of substitution. So uh, real quick inspection. In the top equation, both x and y have a coefficient of 1. So it's totally up to you. What do you want to solve for, x or y? I think I'll add a y to both sides. So that means that x would equal y. That seems pretty easy. All right, so everywhere you see x, you're going to replace it with y. Or everywhere you see y, you can replace it with x your choice. Just to mix things up, everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace it with y. So I'm replacing x with y. So that becomes 5y minus 3y equals 6. Collecting, dividing the 2, okay, back substituting, put y in, uh, put 3 in for y, that's easy. That means that x is 3 also. All right, moving on to example 4, solving the system by the method of substitution. Uh, it looks a little bit different just because um, both sides of the equation are solved for zero. All right, but we're still going to use the same technique. So when I look at the top equation, y's coefficient is negative 1. The bottom equation, y's coefficient is positive 1. It really doesn't matter how you proceed. You could use either equation solving either one of them for y. Because y is already positive over here, I'm going to solve the bottom equation for y which means I'm going to subtract a 4x and add a 5. So in the top equation, wherever I see y, I'm going to substitute in negative 4x plus 5. All right, so pulling down the top equation with the adjustment, 2x minus, substitute in negative 4x plus 5. I'm right here in the problem, then plus 2 and then equal 0. Let's go back and distribute the negative 1. So negative times negative is positive 4x. Go back and distribute negative 1 in and get minus 5. And let's finish solving. So this would collect a 6x. Minus 3 equals 0. Add a 3 uh, to both sides. So 6x equals 3. Divide both sides by 6. Be careful when you divide by 6, it's 3 over 6 which reduces to a half. All right, we've escaped some fractions, so this wasn't, um, this wasn't too bad. All right, now what I'm going to do is I need to solve for y, so I'm going to come back up here to this equation, and where I see x, I'm going to replace in 1 half. So negative 4 times 1 half, if you need to think of that as a fraction over 1, and then um, cross multiply, multiply across, or you can cancel out a 2, reduce a 2, y equals 3. All right, just take a real quick peek back at um, the four examples we just completed. And I want you to notice that in all four of these systems, okay, this is what we would call linear systems. Each equation in the system is a linear equation. So we can specifically say we, we solve some linear systems. And on the back four, that's not always the case. We don't have to work with just lines and intersecting. We can work with any graphs. Graphs can intersect no matter what they are, lines, cubics, quadratics. So those are a little more algebraic intensive, and so we're going to do those in the next video.